Well, hello everybody. This is Louise Eddington, the Cosmic Owl with Cosmic Owl Astrology. And um, if you like my videos um, and want to get more of them, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and maybe hit the little bell next to it to get notified when I upload new content. And always give me a like and or a comment um, on the YouTube channel. I'm trying to grow my YouTube channel and, you know, YouTube loves those algorithms. Oh, I just realized my sound was down, so hopefully you can hear me well. So it's election day in the US. <laughs> I find it kind of funny that I've got a skull here. This is from Moab, Utah, the Moab Brewery. This is kind of the Moab thing and um but it seems kind of appropriate really for the craziness of this election so what i'm not going to do today is look at the candidates charts i'm not going to try and predict this election i personally um i agree with astrolada on um on facebook she says um she says that um <sighs> It's about more than the candidates. It's about larger cycles. And this is what makes it a wild card. I've talked about this election being a wild card. You know, the majority of, uh, there's somebody who collated all the predictions for the winner. And I think, um, astrologically, and um, of the ones collected, uh, it's a slight margin in error of Trump winning the election of predictions from astrologers. But I have to say, in fairness to not all of these astrologers, by the way, but generally the astrologers that are predicting um, Trump winning are Trump supporters and the, uh, the astrologers that are predicting Biden winning are Biden supporters. Some of them are fairly neutral because some of them are not even in this country. Um, I personally have no idea. <laughs> I see positives for both. I also see we've got, and I've talked about it before, we've got this so many wild cards. We've got Mercury stationing direct today, but in a T-square with Eris and Saturn and Pluto. And, and so that's causing mayhem. Um, we've also got um, a total solar eclipse at 23 Sagittarius. So, so very, very close to the lunar nodes on the day the um, Electoral College meet on December the 14th. And we also have a horrible chart for Inauguration Day with Mars exactly conjunct Uranus. And um, and that's it's an awful chart. And I have this feeling that the actual outcome eventually by Inauguration Day may not even be one of those candidates. I could be completely wrong, but it's chaos and mayhem. So today, instead, I'm going to look at the um, US chart and I am going to use what's called the Sibley chart. There are several charts for the US and, you know, every astrologer has an opinion. Um, a lot of what I'm going to talk about, though, doesn't really matter that much about, but it matters a bit. And I do want to um, share the chart. Whoops. And I do want to point at some transits that will be affecting uh, the chart. So this is the US uh, chart. Even if we change the times and have the Gemini rising or there's a, a Liberty chart that another astrologer uses that's from um, a day or so before, uh, it, the country is still a Cancerian country. It was born with the sun in Cancer, which is a cardinal sign. And we've had all these big changes and transits happening in cardinal signs. So it's born with the sun in Cancer and Jupiter also in Cancer and um, Venus also in Cancer and Mercury actually at 24 degrees, which will be important when we come to look at that. Um, so it's a very Cancerian country, um, very, you know, it's, it's always had this protectionist kind of, um, element to it and, you know, people wanting to be safe and worrying about attacks from the outside, you know, it's when, and since this country 
as a USA I'm talking about, has only ever been attacked by Pearl Harbor and 9-11 from outside forces. Um, it's never been invaded as a United States of America or, you know, um, a, a big war from outside. It's kind of funny, really, that we're the ones that have over 800 bases, military bases throughout the world. And we're so worried about constant attacks by other outsiders. That's very Cancerian. So that's just a little bit about the USA's country. Um, it was born with Pluto in Capricorn. So again, a cardinal sign. OK, and the USA is um, approaching its Pluto return, which means that Pluto in the skies will be back where it was on the Independence Day in 1776. That will be exact in 2022. And there's not many um, countries where we've actually lived through a Pluto return. France is going to be another one. Uh, modern day France from the French Revolution, which um, was in that revolutionary period. But we're looking at the USA. So that's turbulent in itself. OK, plus Pluto wasn't even discovered when um, on July the 4th, 1776. OK, so there's that too. Then and so I'm only going to look at the cardinal signs for now. Um, it was born in also with Chiron in Aries, and that's kind of uh, being activated. The cardinal um, signs are Aries, Cancer, Libra and Capricorn. It was also interestingly born with Eris in Capricorn and Eris is causing a lot of mayhem now by transit. So we'll talk to that as well. And um, it was born with Saturn and Juno in um, in Libra, the the kind of the sign of the we. And Saturn has always got a bit of a depressing effect on it, but it was born with Juno in there. And, you know, the 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 ethos of America, Juno is the rights of the oppressed. It's that give me your poor you know, the, the thing that's on the um, <laughs> Statue of Liberty, your huddled masses or whatever the words are. Sorry, not from USA originally. I can't remember the exact words in this moment. And that's exactly opposing Chiron. So the intention of the country, I think, was to bring it all together and heal it and in cardinal signs, initiate this new thing, this project. Um, but let's look at what's happening this week in this election and over the next few days, because um, I think it's pretty big this week for the election. And I'm actually just going to get the transits up. And I wanted to make sure I was not sharing the wrong chart there. And I'm not. So that's all right. We'll go back. So here we are on election day. Mercury is stationing direct very shortly <laughs> in in like literally a few minutes um and um and at 25 53 degrees now the last time mercury station direct on an election day was 2000 and bush gore and so that's interesting for a start now but that was at 29 degrees of um libra the very last degree and if we look around the US chart, though there's not much at the 29th degree, the closest major aspect when Mercury stationed um, back then was a square to Pluto. So a lot of people kind of think that the real changes coming in this country kind of started back then. You know, uh, it's kind of not been a peaceful, lovely place for many years, if you're really honest. So that was 20 years ago. And that 20 years is going to be significant too, by the way. But today, Mercury stations direct at 25 degrees of Libra. We're expecting the same confusion with the votes. and um, But this one's even more because it's opposing Eris and it's squaring Saturn all week. And Eris is approaching its third of five exact squares with Pluto. And that's all close to USA's Pluto. So this is really activating this turmoil, transformative energy in the USA. 
But even more important than that, Mercury is stationing square to the USA's own Mercury. All right. And um, to just take off the transits for a minute, I just want to check something. The USA was born with um, a couple of out of bounds planets. Um, so I just want to look at that. And Venus and Mars were one of them. Oh, Eris was like so far out of bounds. Untrue um, on the birth of the USA. Pluto was also out of bounds. So it's almost like this planet, this this country was always meant to be this kind of outlier and very different and very erratic. But we'll come back to the Venus and Mars being out of bounds in a minute. OK. Lots to talk about. So the fact that this is squaring the own Mercury is are we going to change how we think about ourselves? Um, both you know, Mercury was retrograde on um, when the USA was born. And and so this is this square is really important, a rethinking turn of change of direction of how we think about the country, how the people think about the country. Incidentally, the people is the moon in the USA's chart. And we think of ourselves or the USA thinks of itself as a really humanitarian, freedom loving uh, place, which is very Aquarius. But the reality is not always that way. So that's important. So I'm going to whiz forward over days for this week. Um, so that's kind of uh, on election day. And um, incidentally, also, oh, actually, I will go back to today. Later today, as the election um, uh, draws, as the polls close, the, the moon is in Mercury ruled Gemini. So um, <laughs> Mercury rules this Mars in the election chart. And the moon is going to, the people, is going to hit the North Node exactly late tonight on the USA's Mars. So Mars in Gemini can be very, mm, and there's going to be a lot of headbutting, I think, um, a lot of kind of attacking each other. As the poles open, the moon was on the descendant using this chart. That could indicate a change of direction, but it can also indicate a lot of confusion along the way. So there's that too, and, and it could indicate, um, you know, some eruptions. I know a lot of properties are, a lot of cities are boarding up um, because they're expecting trouble over the next few days. So that's another thing that's happening on this, <laughs> on this election. Okay. There's lots of things. Um, I can't mention everything, but there's some significant things over the next few days. And then tomorrow, um, on Wednesday the 4th, the moon moves to the end of Gemini and goes out of bounds, which means it's acting out of character. So emotions are going to be like all over the place. And the moon mo rules cancer. So then the moon moves into the sign it rules. And this is where that Venus Mars becomes important. So on Wednesday, so here's where we are later in the day, the moon moves into Cancer. I think we're all going to be a bit challenged. We still won't know whether, um, who's the winner, I don't think, you know, or if we do, people's comfort zones are going to be, on both sides, are going to be stretched to the hilt. People are going to be fearful. The moon in Cancer can be very... Um, want to hide in its shell, be very protective. And then the moon will move over the cancer planets over the next few days while out of bounds. At the same time, so I want to kind of move, be, move over these cancer planets while it's out of bounds. So into Thursday, Thursday, Friday are looking a little... Mm, in the meantime, the moon rules Venus. Okay, oh, sorry, the moon squares Venus and then squares Mars, 
which are approaching an opposition. And um, if you remember, I said that the Venus and Mars of the USA were born out, were out of bounds. And so the moon is activating them. The moon will then oppose Pluto, which was also out of bounds. It will oppose Eris in the US chart, which was also out of bounds. It'll approach, uh, it'll uh, oppose the Pluto and the Eris in the USA chart. So this moon out of bounds is challenging all those out of bounds uh, planets. And so Thursday, Friday are looking kind of gnarly and horrible, I have to say. So it moves Thursday, moves over the sun. It's opposed uh, the heiress of the USA. Then it moves to conjunct the USA's Mercury. There we go. Um, on Friday, and which of course was squared by the station, and then Mercury moves to exactly square Pluto again on Friday. Uh, sorry, Saturn by transit again on Friday. Sorry if this is confusing. And then the Cancer Moon moves to square transiting Mercury and oppose Saturn in um, by transit and then oppose the USA's Pluto, because Saturn by transit is coming up to the USA's Pluto to pass it. So basically all this cardinal stuff is being activated. Now what's special about this moon in Cancer period, not only is it out of bounds, not only is it activating all these things, um, it does, can, the moon in Cancer activates it every month, but this month, Venus is in the sign she rules, Libra. Venus is moving quickly through Libra. So she is um, in, you know, not going to be there next time the moon moves to Cancer. I don't know. She won't. And then Mars is also in the sign he rules by transit. And he's stationing to turn direct on the 13th. So I'm going to move forward in a minute. At this point, though, when the moon's in Cancer, we have the moon in the sign she rules, Venus in the sign she rules, Saturn, sorry, Mars in the sign he rules, and Saturn in the sign he rules by transit. The last time there was a Venus-Mars opposition in their own signs while um, Saturn was in Capricorn, was 1783, according to Gary Caton, who is a fabulous astrologer. So there's real larger forces in play um, here. You know, it, it's just kind of crazy. 1783 was the year, and I can link to Gary's um, post, if you like. So 1941 was the last time that uh, they Venus and Libra opposed, uh, Venus and Mars opposed each other in their own signs. But it was 1783 when we had such an opposition. And then, um, and I got a lot of this from his site, by the way. So if you don't follow, um, if you don't follow Gary Caton, go follow him. He's an amazing astrologer. The Peace of Paris was signed just after the last instance of such an opposition in 1783, when Venus and Mars last opposed each other in their own signs while Saturn was in Capricorn. All three planets, Saturn, Venus and Mars, were in those same signs at the time of signing, which was the 3rd of September on um 1783. I take that as such a, um, a hopeful, um, hopeful kind of message, to be honest, but it's tension. These planets are all crossing each other. And to go forward a little bit more, on Monday, the 9th, Venus and Mars oppose each other exactly by transit and Venus will be conjunct 
the Saturn of the USA. Venus is strongest because she's direct and ruling her own sign. But Mars on November the 9th is only four days away from stationing direct. So he's at a real tense point. This is really kind of clashy kind of energy. It's really, uh, you know, I think people are right to be, let's say, concerned that there might be some trouble and some um, turmoil going on because this is intense over this year. And so I only wanted to talk really about the USA. Um, no matter who wins, I think there's going to be turmoil. All right. Now, I want to move to a couple of other dates that I mentioned. Um, I mentioned, um, first of all, December the 14th, we have, that's the day the Electoral College uh, meets. Um, we have a, a solar eclipse at 23 degrees. I'm just going to go back time-wise a bit of Sagittarius. Oops. It's a total solar eclipse. Oh, sorry. I click too many times, go to many places. So this total solar eclipse is on um, December the 14th when the Electoral College meets. That's at 23 degrees of Sagittarius. Um, which is opposing the USA's Mars. So that indicates a total reset. Now, as I understand it, as an immigrant, I'm trying to really get to know the USA's house system. The Electoral College makes the final decision on the, who is the winner of an election. There's even a possibility that they could put, say somebody else, depending on what happens between November the 3rd and December the 14th. Either way, it's going to be contentious. It's going to be um, in Mars, in Gemini, in the sign, in the seventh house, is in the sign of politics um, and is about decisions. So that is interesting. Um, also, it's square to US uh, Neptune. I mean, what's the possibility that between November the 3rd and December the 14th, the winner of the election passes away? They're both elderly, <laughs> either way. And the Electoral College has to make some kind of decision. I've had this real feeling that who we end up with as president might be a surprise. <laughs> so, so there's that. You'll see at this point as well, on the um, eclipse day on December the 14th, um, Jupiter is also on, um, where it will have just passed, but it's still in orb of being conjunct with USA's Pluto. So that's seismic changes. Okay. Um, and yeah, you get the idea. <laughs> now, I mentioned that um, on... Um, in um, 2000, that was the last time Mercury Station direct on um, election day. All right. So in the year 2000 as well, where are they? forget that. Let's just go to this December the 21st. It's not what I thought it was. So sorry. <laughs> but I wanted to say the 20 years is still um, relevant, because it's the great conjunction. So the great conjunction this year is very close to the USA's Pluto It's at zero Aquarius. And now I am going to go back to um, 2020 because 2000 but back a few days because 
that was also the year of the last great conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn. And I'm probably going to go back weeks instead. Sorry, I've done it again. Click, click, click. <laughs> anyway, let's go back and um, look where that last conjunction was between Jupiter and Saturn. My husband loves to stand outside my office and talk loudly to the animals. But anyway, the last um, conjunction, there we go. Was at Twenty three. Oh, I've done it again. Twenty two. Twenty two degrees Capricorn. Now, not only did we have that Mercury stationing direct on um, Election Day earlier in the year of that election. Jupiter and Saturn were together at the start of that 22, 20 year cycle. The um, Great Conjunction happens every 20 years. So this was the last one in Earth signs because this one, next one is going to be in air signs. This was, con this was in trine to Neptune in Virgo. And if you remember back to January of this year, of this election year, we had this Great Conjunction at 22 degrees Capricorn over here. This turmoil all started back then and this 22 degrees um, of uh, Taurus was bringing massive change and in turmoil to in trying to uh, Neptune in Virgo I want to say it started to dissolve the structures of the USA started to bring this change the last Earth Great Conjunction was in that earth sign and in aspect to Neptune, also in sextile to that Mercury that we've talked about. Also in um, trying to really a wide trying to the Pluto and also in a bit of a square. I'm going to say five degrees for a great conjunction is fair to the moon. The USA started to fall apart then. We're kind of seeing what echoes of that election in the Gore Bush years about when the courts kind of started to um, hold sway and corruption and manipulation of all of the elections really kind of came to the fore. And I don't think anything's ever been the same since. You know, you might go, well, the Obama elections were fair, but were they? I don't know. You know, we've seen manipulations in primaries too. Um, I've worked in the Democratic primaries and there's been manipulation by the parties to get who they want as the candidates. Um, and I'm not talking about, you know, anything illegal. I'm talking parties, they're private parties. They're able to do what they want. But how how um how for you know what a what a foretelling that the last great conjunction was aspecting and and aspecting what's happening now because it was in trine exact trine to all that 22 degree mark of capricorn that's been so bringing so much turmoil this year so then back to this year So we have that great conjunction at zero. OK, and as um, right after the Electoral College meets under that eclipse energy. Now, we don't have a lot that's zero um, in the US chart. So but it is starting this greater new cycle. On to inauguration day and then I'm going to leave it there. We'll look at that in the US chart. 
All right, on inauguration day, Mars meets Uranus. And I'm going to go forward just till there because Mars moves a bit slower. When they're exact, the moon is also pretty close and the moon is a light. So we usually give a bigger orb. So we've got the moon, the people, Mars, Uranus at six degrees. Um, in sextile to the Jupiter of the sun, but even more importantly, in square to the lunar nodes of the USA, which no matter where you put them in the chart, they were at six degrees that day. A square to the lunar nodes is a major turning point. This is sudden, disruptive change. You know, um, even if the Electoral College pick one of the two people, by January the 20th, something could happen on Inauguration Day. You know, the, the winning candidate could be up there and have a heart attack or something and, and the VP step in. This is crazy energy for the USA. Whatever we, you know, change is coming no matter what. OK, with this this exactly squaring the nodes and the people being here as well, conjuncted and the people actually at zero um, Taurus squaring the point of that great conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn that takes part on December the 21st. This is such a wild card. There's so many variables and so much radical change coming in. Now, I'm going to leave it there. I just wanted you to see how the US chart was um, what was affected by all of this and that we are in for crazy times. So just take care of yourselves. You've done what you can. You can vote. You can't do much else at this point um, other than, um, you know, maybe phoning, um, you know, your representatives and things like that, depending on what happens. Um, we Jen and I on my, on our weirdly magical podcast are going to do a free call on November the 19th, looking at 2021 overall. So, um, we're going to be putting up registration, uh, links for that on the weirdly magical page, uh, Facebook page and uh, various other places. It's a free call. We're just going to, um, you know, look ahead at 2021. But I specifically wanted to look at the US today and look at what's coming because it's crazy. You know, I I really don't think we can predict what's going to be happen, what where we'll be after January the 20th, 2021. I really don't. <laughs> it's just all I know is big collective forces are a play and um and it's it's kind of crazy that, oh, I do want to mention as well that that, um, I'll go back and quickly share, back to the USA's um, Eris, uh, Eris in the natal chart. That's at eight degrees in trying to this. So more chaos, more discord. It's kind of a horrible, horrible chart, this transit for inauguration day, for shocks, for surprises. Neptune will be conjunct Eris, um, um, sorry, um, Ceres. And Ceres is also about grief and loss. There could be some major um, grief and loss on that day as well. We, we look at this six degree, it's in the meeting of Mars and Uranus. It's, it's in square to uh, Jupiter and Saturn by orb and the sun, really, the sun and the moon are squaring each other on on that day as well. So <laughs> expect some shocks, expect some surprises. Incidentally, um, Venus will be squaring the Saturn of the USA on the inauguration day as well. Whereas at the moment she's at the election, she's actually um, coming up to be exactly conjunct. It's a, such a wild card. I just know I just have to look after me and mine and keep living.
and I suggest you do the same. So if you enjoyed this, please subscribe and um, hit that little bell, hit some likes, sending your love on this election day, because what happens here is going to ripple out throughout the world.